The Quancheng UVK5 is a very cool two meter CW radio and a lot of people are catching wind of its functionality. Now the information regarding how to get this fully set up, ready to go to where you're operating CW on the air is a bit scattered. Some of it's a little bit inconsistent and I feel like over the last month, I've finally gathered the information necessary to get this thing rocking and rolling for on-air operation. Not at any of the credit to myself. That's all been information I've received from third parties, mostly guys in Southern California that do uh, two meter CW. Let's go ahead and get this fully set up today. I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to get your Quan Chang, a $27 radio, ready to rock and roll for two meter CW. So step one is you gotta go get your radio that was just delivered. Oh, there it is. Now that you've got your radio, you simply open it. And this will be a uh, step-by-step, so I would recommend you follow exactly what I'm about to do, literally step-by-step. -step. And uh, for now, we're literally just gonna use this guy. And so here's one of the, this is gonna be the NR7Y mod. So I'll try to credit the people that gave me the information. The NR7Y mod is taking that guy off. And in that video, he removes this nut. Don't touch that nut. You, you will ruin your radio if you try to take pliers to this nut. I've broken a couple, I've had friends break it. Just remove this, take it out. This little plastic piece will come off. Just put that to the side. Try not to rip off the red and black cable. So now you're gonna use the same type of a, kind of a thin flathead that you use to get the, the uh, PCB out. You're gonna push that down and up. Now that's ready to come free and get this open. So I'm actually gonna to go to my phone now and just zoom in on specifically what we're going to mess with. So we are going to remove this resistor. So note this screw and then note this tiny resistor, you can barely see it. Let me see if I can even zoom in even further. It's this guy, and then we're gonna use this. I actually need to voice over here because I screw up in the video, indicating that you should use this blob here at the top. You actually use the one right beneath it. So I use a little piece of 28 gauge uh, silicone wire. You can find this on Amazon, and uh, I use it for my counterpoises for my KH1, but it'll work perfect here. So note the top audio plug. There is an audio jack at the top, and then just left of that, uh, there's a little capacitor resistor right below that that blob of solder right there is the top one that is the correct one you will attach to the top piece of the wire and then here i'm indicating falsely again what blob to use you'll actually use that one beneath it so i'll circle it right here so you can see which one to attach it to all right so here you can see it completed um, like i said use this bottom blob of solder attach it to that blob of solder just beneath the uh, audio jack there and you'll also notice that that resistor, if you look closely, it's gone. There was a resistor in that location right there. I'll indicate it with these uh, little pliers. Remember to slide that little plastic piece back on right there. You have to just insert and snap in. You might need to give it some force right here to snap this in fully, just like that. Once again, that was the NR7Y mod as found on the Soda Plus YouTube channel. You're gonna go ahead and reassemble the radio now, put the push button back on and the antenna. Let's go put the firmware on this guy. Mandatory, you must have a Baofeng cable. Make sure it's clicked in all the way. Far and away, the most common question asked is what firmware should I use? And I use the firmware that the majority of two meter CW operators recommend. A bunch of guys already using this radio that have logged tons and tons of contacts recommend the IJV 2.95 linked in the description. It is the one that I've clicked and obviously used before. Looks like there's additional firmware versions. I don't know if it really matters, but these guys really recommend 2.95, that's what I use. Additionally, there is a flash firmware software. This is so critical. A lot of the softwares you download for the Quan Ching to program that radio are kind of finicky and weird and awkward. This is like the most brain dead version to flash the firmware and it works 99.9% .9 of the time very, very well. So I'll show you guys, I'm actually gonna flash this right now. Okay, so let's download our 2.95. If I click that, it'll immediately download the firmware. Here's the firmware link. And that's now in my folder. I'm actually gonna extract all. Extract. Boom, there it is. And I'm gonna go to my browse, grab what I just extracted, grab the 2.95, and now that's loaded. And because my radio is plugged in, I can go ahead and click flash firmware. I know that my COM port is COM port eight. 
And what I'm gonna do is, I'm, whoops, I stopped the video. I'm gonna go ahead and enable this for firmware flashing. So let me do this real quick. Push this guy in the PTT and turn that on. You'll get a, a white light. That white light means it's ready to rock and roll. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect and I'm gonna go ahead and hit flash firmware. It's already going. So 12 point, 18 point, and it's flashing. The 2.95 is being loaded onto this within two minutes of it arriving at my doorstep. So that is the firmware you'll go add. After we get this firmware added, I'm gonna go through the settings that my buddy Adam K6ARK told me to set up this radio with. So we'll go through those settings here and right now because it's done flashing. So let me turn that off again and show you guys. So IJV 2.9, there you go. Let's go through the settings. So to go to the settings, you hit the menu here. The first one, we're gonna go ahead and turn our squelch all the way off. And we're actually gonna program those squelch buttons to be quick access buttons here on the left. Then we'll go to mode and we'll hit CW. Then we'll go to narrow. Transmit power high. Turn that down for you guys. And I think that's, there's, oh yeah. And the first thing you want to do with all these radios is turn beacon off. It's really annoying when you put that firmware on there, it'll go to that beacon right away. So let me show you guys how to get that beacon off. I feel like I keep passing it. There it is. Boom. Beacon off. Now it won't do that anymore. So the beacon menu is 45. And you get that beacon off, now you're good to go. Now we're gonna go to the secret menu and I'm gonna show you how my buddy Adam K6ARK had me set this up. The way to get into the secret menu is turn the radio off, push the PTT and the top button together and turn on. It'll say release all keys, release, and now you're in the secret menu. Now that we've enabled the secret menu mode, we can go into the menu and we'll have additional settings we can adjust. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these up and I'm gonna link in the description these specific settings that I'm including. So you'll notice uh, side 1S is monitor. We're actually gonna change that to, that's a short push. We're gonna change that to squelch increase. Then we're gonna go to long press side 1L. That's this button right here. And we are gonna turn that to monitor because you wanna have your monitor enabled when you're operating. Then the short push is gonna be squelch decrease. And then long press is gonna be our CW CQ call, which is really cool. It's a very nice feature that this has a CW message. So then we'll go to 56, I believe, and I'm gonna put my call sign in. I'm gonna make you guys watch that because it's actually really easy to do. And we usually hit this a couple more times. It's really confusing. So just hit this a couple more times and you're out. And now when I hit exit on this, Do you notice how I just held this down? Because we just programmed, if I long press this guy, that's my CQ call. Let's go, baby. So now I'll show you guys those secret menu options I just did. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I'm operating is I'm gonna enable monitor, long press it. So now my monitor's on. That little M at the top, that's my monitor. And you notice if I short press, watch the S1 in the top left. Two, three, four, that's my squelch. And I can lower it here. So my monitor's on, I'm actually ready to operate CW. Let's go to the fun part. I'm gonna show you guys how I rig this up with the key. The fact of the matter is I love the Quan Cheng because it's a handheld CW radio in a complete package, built-in speaker, built-in battery. Uh, and the only thing that's lacking from the KH1 is a built-in key. So I've chosen to do that. A lot of people may not like it, but for me, it's a really, really cool feature. I went ahead and did some, uh, this is 3M dual lock. They actually make some that's black and I think thinner than this. This came out a little bit thick but I just place this here and then I purchase a CW Morse. This is the Nano QRP. And what I actually do is I just draw with a little Sharpie. I just outline the base because the base is screwed on here. I do wanna keep that base because if not, it actually exposes the internals. And what I do is just with these uh, cutters, I actually just trim it and get it to where it's completely flush. So this is completely flush and I throw that on there and this becomes a miniature KH1 for me and it just snaps right in. It's pretty sweet and that's ready to go. I don't keep it like that when I'm traveling or if it's in my backpack, but when I'm out in the field, I just do exactly like that. And I actually just made a little makeshift, sorry for the camera angle, a little makeshift uh, audio plug here. And once you've got it all set up like I do, uh, this is how I like to run it. I'm ready to call CQ. Thanks for watching.